Jesus! Oh my Jesus! Are you freaking kidding? Here, you ready? Oh! Oh my G- Welcome back. It is Thursday, October 24th. It's 6.21 a.m. I decided to sleep in a little bit because my Wednesdays are like the hardest day of the week. I run with Bat City in the morning, which I'm the slowest one there, so I get dropped every time. And then like an hour after I finish that workout, I go and I swim with NVDM, and they do like a, a tempo swim that day. So that one's always hard too. And then on top of it all, <laughs> and on top of it all, I'll do deadlifts that day, as if, like the combat lift or the full body lift. And I did 495 for five yesterday. So, so I decided to sleep in a little bit. But today we got a great day. We got so much good stuff going on. We got ourselves an hour and 20 minute ride, which I'm gonna do outside in the Velo Way. We're gonna go watch the sunrise together. Why not? It's bittersweet because as it's now nearing the end of October, time is flying by, what the hell? But as it's nearing the end of October, the sun is rising a little bit later, so I can hop on the bike at like 7.15 and still catch the sunrise, so that's a good sign. After that, another quick turnaround. We got a recovery swim today, but Gavin's gonna be here to record it. And we're meeting the man, Matt Choi, a uh, good friend of mine since I moved here, and he was like, yo, like, teach me how to swim. And I said, okay, Matt, I got you. So him and I are hitting up Lifetime at around 10.30 a.m. I'll probably swim around 4K. Um, 4k yards so I think it's like 3700 meters maybe 3750 meters and then a little bit later on we got a team workout at BPN which is super fun that's just like a quick high rocks workout that we drive up to Round Rock and uh, all rip together so that'll be a good time and then I'll close out the night with some work but yeah we just gotta kind of get going with all our usual the usual morning routine of fueling and stretching and warming up and whatnot and we're gonna pack a car and head out so let's have just a great day today because why not? Woo! So this is really how the majority of my mornings are. Um, I roll out my feet with this thing that Tony bought me. Uh, I have a go bar and then I also have two scoops of G1M in the shaker. And then I, t <laughs> I just read whatever the day is for daily stoic. It's kind of funny. It, it's super applicable to my life. I guess I'm a pretty stoic person without even realizing it. So yeah, after this, I move into just foam rolling out my back, Farragut in my legs and then we'll just pack everything up and hit the road.
sun is finally starting to come out this morning. Let's just have a great ride. Hour 20, nothing crazy. Just a good start to the day. Gavin's here. We're gonna go shoot and record swimming. I forgot I told Matt 10 30 instead of 11. So I'm gonna real quick eat my breakfast, get my swim stuff, and then hopefully I won't cramp and drown because I don't know if there's gonna be enough time to digest, but we'll be fine. What the hell is up, YouTube? Today we're recording. Yeah. Um, no. I'm gonna do a little swim workout with Matt Choi. He's about to meet us here. We have Gavin behind the camera as usual. It's like a weird day out. It's somewhat gray, somewhat blue. Very cool temperature. We're gonna be in the outside pool, so hopefully it's not too cold today. But yeah, bike ride this morning, super smooth. 27 miles in an hour and 20 minutes, so can't complain about that. Now we're gonna swim, go back home and eat, and then head up to BPN for the team workout, like I said. And just have a damn good day. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. It feels nice. I cold plunge often, so this actually feels, <laughs> it feels not nearly as yeah, bad. Yeah, bro, it feels pretty good actually. It's all about just getting a good flow in the water, man. That's all it comes down to. Fuck yeah. We just got done. I want to just see really quick. What does your watch say? My longest swim. It's it's one k. Longest 0. swim. 0. Right there. Yeah. I haven't been I haven't been in the water in, in a very long time. I was telling Luke the last time I was in the water was with Natasha, and 
it was at this lifetime, but inside, and she was critiquing, critiquing my form, and she gave me a ton of good advice. <laughs> A ton of sound advice and today getting to actually go through a workout because we didn't do a workout No, like it was kind of just like all right, Matt go go down and back and like she was like more just videotaping and like just like assessing it but even today like The little cues that Luke gave and just like having these like little tools to like Kind of isolate some of the muscles mm -hmm. and isolate some of the form. I think was really helpful. Yeah, um, I will say just like do this I'm not like I'm not comfortable enough in the water when it comes to like breathing. I definitely like, I feel like at moments I'm like overexerting. Yeah. And like I just, I lose control of my breath. Two things, big things is that like, what I talk about a lot is like to swim faster. It's like, you have to do like the, the little things, right? It's all about your form. Yeah. So if you want to run fast, you just like move your legs a little harder, bike faster, pedal harder. But like running, it's like, you have to be very fluid. That's yeah. what we kept talking about, your flow in the water. And then the same thing with the breathing aspect is like swim fitness is extremely different from running or biking fitness because it's just purely oxygen management versus like you can breathe at any time you know 100 whereas here like there are times you have to stop because you're like oh shit like I, yeah. sw I swallowed water and now i'm like oh damn it um but it, it just comes out with like more reps like yeah. we said like no for the sure more time you spend here the more effort you put into it the better you get at it so and i think also like uh even like ryan's going pretty like comfortably slow right now mm -hmm. i think i actually just needed to like not get so out of control yeah and i think it's so easy when you're in the water you're like you're looking down and you're like yo i'm almost there and you got kind of just like exert you more just effort flail your arms a yeah. little bit but then you lose that fluid motion correct. and then it's just like you're using more effort to technically go slower correct because like you can move your arms really fast in the water and not go nearly as fast if you're being very efficient with your stroke fully striding out grasping as much water as possible it all adds up yeah so. i will say out of all the things we use, I'm still a fan of the fins. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep using the fins then. Yeah, yeah. The fins are it, dog. I love it, dude. Well, I appreciate having you, bro. Rip. Yeah, dude, of course. Hell yeah, so many man. more. Let many more, bro. After 1100 meters, teaching Matt how to swim, we just wrapped up another 3k meters by ourselves. So, probably around two and a half to 2.6 miles of swimming on the deck. Definitely happy with the fact that I just continued to show up. Like, there were so many times during that back half by myself where I was like, trying to reason like not doing the full sets because I'd already swam before. I was like, shut up, just keep swimming. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really hungry now, so let's go get food. That was great. Woo! So after, after spending two and a half hours at Lifetime, swimming two and a half miles, whatever, we're headed home, like all right, feeling good. Got my energy bites that I sporadically bought because I was just so hungry get a phone call. Hey, is this Luke Hopkins? I'm like, yeah, it is. We just found your wallet on the pool deck at Lifetime. So now we're going back to Lifetime. Go ahead and show the traffic on the other side now. You see that? We're gonna go sit in that again. I'm stupid. <laughs> I fucking forgot my wallet. Damn it. We're all good. We're not in a rush. It's funny. The best part is like, so I've been coming here since I moved here, so about like six months now. And I've talked to a lot of people, met a lot of people. I'm always like very friendly with the, the staff. And like four people that I've just never once talked to were like, oh, did you get your wallet? Oh, your wallet? Like, like as I'm walking, the guy was just like, yeah, your wallet's at the aquatic. Like, so 
I guess everyone knows who I am. No, I'm joking, but got our wallet. That's pretty cool. Gonna go home now, make some actual food. It's 137. BPN team workout is 330, but then we have to leave at like 2.30ish to get there because of traffic, so we had a little bit of time. We're good. Full transparency. I literally made it all the way home after I had left my wallet at Lifetime and we went back and got it. Get back here, say bye to Gavin, unpack my bag. I'm like, wait a minute. I usually wear two chains when I'm just out and about. You know, I have this one with the cross on it and then I have this shorter one from Minted. And I was just like, okay, I always take the, the longer one off when I swim because I don't want them to get tangled when I'm doing flip turns and whatnot. And get home, unload all my stuff and I'm like, where the hell is the second chain? So I drive all the way back to Lifetime, another 20 minute drive. And what do you know, my chain was on the pool deck outside, right next to where my bag would have been. So I'm really dumb. It's now 2.45 and I gotta drive up to BPN and I've only had those energy bites, god damn it. But we're good, we're living, we're fine. It's fine, I'm fine, gotta keep doing. I'm gonna eat like three apples on the ride up I think. And then when we come home, just have a massive meal. Probably mostly just protein oriented because those energy bites were like all fats and carbs. So like I'm feeling good right now. Like don't get me wrong. I'm just trying to be mindful of just like my macros and like what I probably should be consuming for the rest of the day. But that doesn't matter right now. We're going to BPN. Back in the car. Woo! update you on what's going on because it's been a second. So the drive home from BPN, I don't know what my hair is doing, I just got out of the shower. So the drive home from BPN took over an hour and I'm just totally out of it. But Cheryl said he wants to go to all you can eat sushi and I'm so down, especially considering that I've just been so off my eating all day today. I find it really ironic that last video was just all about nutrition, how to optimize your diet. In this video, I have like completely failed to exemplify that. But I realized I haven't ate much protein today. So I literally just air fried. There were two pieces of chicken, I already ate one. And then I was like, oh my God, I forgot to record. Uh, I still have to take all my reds, my greens, my vitamins. And then what I'm gonna do is just post up in the leg sleeves, read a little bit, maybe play a little bit of chess, practice some French, and just chill out, rehydrate, enjoy my singular piece of chicken, and then when we go to All You Can Eat Sushi, I'm going to eat so much food. Uh, also, the team working at BPN, super chill today. It was only Simon, Tobin, and I ripping it. Usually, a lot more people are active. Uh, I think it's just people were drained from the busy week. Uh, so we just did some sled pulls and some armor's carries, and then I added some additional conditioning at the end with four by 500 ski, four by 800 bike, four by 500 row, all in 60 second rest. I'm so excited for all you can eat sushi. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God.
These are blue light glasses. I really was just wearing them for dramatic effect, if I'm being honest. I could have recorded a lot more at All You Can Eat Sushi, looking back at that one five second video that I have, but like, we just ate a lot of sushi. That, that, that was the extent of it. And after an extremely busy day, I had no energy to even pick up the camera after sushi, so I went right to bed. And now we're here a week later. This video is about to get uploaded. I'm recording the closing bit. And I wanted to go over something that I sent in my Instagram channel uh, on Saturday because I think that's pretty much what motivated me or inspired me to title the video about being like a dreamer or having the dreamer mindset. So what I said was, for whoever needs to hear it on a Saturday night, it's okay to be afraid about being different. It's okay to be afraid of working towards a goal not many people may understand. It's okay to be afraid of what tomorrow holds. But you cannot let the fear of the unknown undermine your desire to do something special. You cannot let the fear of what others may think of you get in the way of you becoming a version of yourself you are truly proud of. It's never too late to start living your life how you truly want to. It will be scary, but it will be worth it. I hope you all have a great night and can make tomorrow a day you are one step closer to turning your dreams into reality. Where my headspace was at when I said that was, I was finishing up a bike workout on a Saturday night and I was thinking to myself, it's like, what are other 22 year olds, what are other people my age doing right now? And with Halloween being in the middle of the week, I was just thinking like, oh, people are out. People are, you know, socializing, do whatever, whatever they want. And that's great. That's absolutely amazing. If that's what you want to do, 100% do it. I was just thinking to myself, this is my dream right here, to be able to create, to be able to train and live like an athlete every single day. I was on that bike, not because I had to, but because I like, genuinely wanted to. Nobody at all is forcing me to live the life that I'm living. I am actively choosing every single day to pursue this dream that I have, this ideal life that I get to live. And I think oftentimes it's almost normalized to give up on your dreams to simply pursue what others are doing or what you think society is forcing you to do. And I don't want to be one of those people that's just like, oh, break into the mold, the yada yada side of norms. No, what I'm saying is that so often we look at these things, these desires, these aspirations that we have and we only allow them to exist in our heads. We fail to execute and create something in real life that allows for our dreams to come to fruition. Instead, it's just all this like what could have been possible, what you wish could have happened. When in reality, this is it. And I feel like I've made this point so many times, but the idea of being a dreamer is not intended to simply just live in this imagination that you have in your head. No, it's to take actions, to create a life that you are genuinely excited to wake up for every single day. You should love where you live. You should love what you do because this is it. There isn't going to be another time in your life that you are exactly where you are right now, doing what you are doing right now. So if it's not what you wanna be doing, take a step back and truly ask yourself, what can I do to become the version of myself that I've always wanted to be? What does that version of myself look like? What do they do on a daily basis? What habits do they do? How do they go about their day? How can I emulate that within my own life? And it's not gonna be easy. It's going to be scary. People are going to question you. You are going to feel like you are alone in the process, but that is truly worth it in my opinion. If you were to try and explain your dreams and every single thing that you want to accomplish and have it make sense to every single person you come in contact with, you would waste your entire life trying to convince other people that you are doing the right thing when in reality you're failing to prove it to yourself. And I know it's different because you might look at me and be like, oh, he has a social media following. Oh, he has sponsors. Like, of course he can say all this. My entire life has changed in a matter of probably 18 months. So it's like, I, I remember I was a junior in college. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I said, you know what? I'm going to start posting on social media because that was what I genuinely wanted to do. I'm not saying every single person out there has to post on social media. No, it's I genuinely wanted to try this out and I said, I'm going to do it. I genuinely wanted to start a coaching business to help other people, so I said, I'm going to do it. I genuinely wanted to sign up for marathons and bodybuilding shows and powerlifting meets and Ironmans, so I went ahead and did it. I turned these dreams that I used to sit in the shower to and fantasize about or lie up in bed at night and think about like all these cool things that I wish I could be doing, I said, 
fuck it, I'm gonna start actually doing them, and I took the action needed to do it. So if you're out there right now, and you need any type of advice as to how to start social media, or how to follow your dreams, or how to get consistent, don't ask for advice, just start doing it. Because I love to help people, I love to answer as many questions as possible, but my biggest piece of advice to anyone that asked, where do I start? It's right where you are in your life right now because where I started and where you are starting or where you will start is probably very different. There might be commonalities, there might be similarities, but ultimately every single person lives an individual experience. Therefore, as opposed to constantly looking at other people and asking questions about, oh, what was your experience like? What was your experience like? What is your experience like? Have you like inwardly asked yourself, where am I right now and what am I doing and how can I take my life to where I want it to be? I'm just like fired up about this right now. I've worked out three times today. I'm gonna go work out a fourth because I'm just so motivated and I just genuinely am so grateful to be living the life that I am and I just hope that someone out there can watch this video and say, fuck it, I'm gonna take the risk, I'm gonna stop caring what other people think, and I'm gonna start living my life for me. Because this is the only life you have, this is the only time you'll have this exact experience, so really, take it all in, make the most of it, it's going to be hard, it's going to be scary, but you have to remind yourself that in the end, it's all going to be worth it. With all that being said, and I know that was a lot, I'm sorry, I really just kinda had a riff, I was just like, oof. Um, I really just want to thank you guys for everything. Always. The amount of support, the amount of love, it's really cool. Whether it be me running in Austin and someone shouts my name, me in the gym, comments on Instagram, no matter what it is, I, I appreciate all of it genuinely so much. So truly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for allowing my dreams to become reality and for supporting me in doing so. With all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close out this video so I can upload it because I've been trying to upload on Mondays and it's Monday at... 5 15 p.m. so we got to get this going but if you'd like to use code hop for bpn they just launched orange g1m sport which is my go-to product you saw me take five scoops of it today code hop for that as well as for gymshark i think yeah these are gymshark shorts three inch run they're my go-to's code hop for that as well inner flame is my coaching business that i started up because i wanted to uh training plans coaching anything that you might need for hybrid training power building marathons triathlons it's all on there so if you want to check it out, if you have any questions about it, feel free to email me. Feel free to look at it. But yeah, with all that being said, I want to thank you guys very much so for watching. Start turning your dreams into reality. Be the version of yourself you've always wanted to be. I will see you guys next time. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Peace.